This is Tanya Lynn with the Sistership Circle podcast. From spirituality, sexuality, and sisterhood to business, relationships, contribution, and creativity, the Sistership Circle podcast introduces a new model of feminine leadership where women get real and vulnerable about it all. Tune in for authentic advice that will empower you to be bold, beautiful, and brilliant as your true self. Hi, it's Tanya Lynn with another episode of our podcast and specifically the How to Lead Circle series. Super excited today to speak with Ro Couture Vassaro. <laughs> Gotta get that right. Jersey girl. So excited. We were actually just before starting to roll the tape here, we were looking back at um, when we first connected. And the first email that we have was from September, 2016. And so it's been a while. I mean, Ro and I have been on this journey together for a while and um, just such a pleasure to have all of her contributions with Tribe here. So welcome, Ro. Thank you for being here. So excited. Thank you for having me. I'm excited Mm. to be here. Love Mm. watching what you're doing and I'm just so, I'm just thrilled to be able to be here and say, hey, I started, I, I took your class and now look what's happened. So happy mm. to be here. Yes. And you've had such amazing transformation that we were just talking about. We're like, wait, stop, stop <laughs> talking. We got to get this on tape because it's so yes. good. Um, okay. So let's start with how you found Sistership Circle and the story of how you came into this this world of ours, the sistership circle world. Yeah. So what happened in in 2014, I started my coaching business and I was coaching women and I'm coaching women entrepreneurs. And in my businesses, my brand is all about being a gutsy gal, you know, gutsy gals get more, you know, we get more freedom, more love, more money, more everything. And it was starting to evolve where I was starting to really, get more tapped into the feminine side of a woman owning who she is and building her business. So I started to really change instead of being like a more of a leadership coach into being like, no, we need to teach women how to be feminine leaders and and start to look at that. So during, during my research, I found you and I found you as a woman who's leading women to be feminine leaders and I believe, I think I got your book and I loved the book. And then I, so I got on, I got on your email list, you know, the, the normal, the, the trend, right? And then you introduced about circles and women's circles. And I was just so intrigued by that. And I mean, I'm a psychology major and I've been a mind, body and soul person my whole entire life, even though I grew up in Brooklyn. So I was like a street gal. So I say like, you know, street smarts were hot, you know, and, and I was realizing that I was like really stifling my own mind, body, soul type stuff and just being so much on the street smart. I needed to like have that more balance. So that's how I found you. And that's when I started learning about circle and I was intrigued. So I said, I want to know more. (laughs) What do you remember from my book? I'm curious. And what, um, yeah, what stood out from you for you around my book, if you can remember? Uh, well, you know what I remember the most. What really got me is that it was the first book that I could read about leadership and females that was spiritual, but it wasn't so overly woo woo that it lost me. You know, a lot of the spiritual stuff sometimes they just get it was just too much for me that it was just like, I didn't relate. So I loved your balance of mainstream and woo woo and like, you know, and kind of like putting the two together. So that's, I think what stands out for me the most. Mm, Yeah. Thank you. And so first you came into how to lead circle And that was actually, whoa, back in October, 2016, Mm -hmm. thinking way back onto that experience. What, what stood out to you the most of your memory of the program? Like what were some of the highlights from that, that particular program and and some of the, 
the big insights or ahas that you got, you can think back. The, I would say what I remember the most was how deep the transformation was and how quick transformation can happen. And being like, whoa, like here I am a coach and, you know, we, we do transformational work, but this was, this was like, you got results like fast. Like I felt it, you know, for myself and I seen it in the other women and I just felt the power of it and how this is, it just, it made me just recognize like how powerful circles are. This is not just women coming together in a circle and having a conversation. This is so way more than that and so deeper. And so like what we get, what we get out of it, what I got out of it was just so that like made me think of things that I haven't even been thinking about, you know, and recognizing stuff in myself. And, and once I, it was like once I saw it, once I had that awareness by doing the work live and not having to go home and be, okay, put it on my to-do list and never get around to it. But by doing the work live and forcing me to, into doing it, it stayed with me. It's like one of those, like it gets into this, your cells. It gets into your cell that doesn't leave. And, it, and, it's, um, and that's one of the things that I recognized at, at first. It's like how it's like, it's like once you see this stuff, once you go through it, it's permanent. It's yeah. not like motivational. It's not that just, oh, this is a quick fix, temporary, and tomorrow you're going to go back to your old ways. Yeah, because you actually had to participate in the circle and embody the teachings right then and there, mm -hmm. um, which is so much different than just like watching videos and right. you're watching. It's the difference between... Um, yeah, it, it, experiencing it versus just like, what, it, I think of like with class, right? Like you're in a lecture class and you're just watching the professor, right? You can only take in so much knowledge, but when mm -hmm. you're actually doing it, you're having the embodied experience. You're actually getting wisdom, which is the distinction you're actually, you're making the difference between knowledge and wisdom. Wisdom right. comes from the experience, which is yes. why we've set up the program as you are participant in the circle. And that's how you're then going to learn how to then take this out into your own circles. So, yeah. And one of the things I quickly noticed was that when I was holding my, hosting my own events, I was doing like full day workshops and full day events and you get feedback and you do surveys and you see what's working, what's, what's not working. I've noticed that when I would do exercises with women, and they would get together and they would do the exercise. And it's that debriefing after the exercise where they would talk amongst one another was what they loved the most is what they got the most transformation. And I started to see like, wow. So circles, it was like that little piece of my workshops was really what circles are. And I'm like, so what women really want is and learn is in community. So I need to reverse that order <laughs> and like, and make and it's easier for me too, but it's like get out of that teaching mode and getting into the experience mode. And you said it right in the head, but experience, and that's what it's all about now. Yeah. And it's the, di it's the distinction between teacher and facilitator. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. actually, I think like where I'm at now with my journey is the, the combination of both. Mm -hmm. But I think um, so many women have such a hard time getting started because they think they have to be the teacher because that's the old paradigm of the patriarchy that we've learned that, right. you know, you have to stand in front of everyone and a talking head, right? Mm -hmm. And feminine leadership is about being an embodied facilitator, which is simply just holding space and you don't have to do anything Right. Like, that's what you said. It's just, it's so much easier now that I don't feel like I have to teach everything. I don't have to be the know-it-all. I just put them into pairs or put them in the groups and let them do their thing. Yeah. Boom. Done. Well, like hardest, my job's done. The hardest <laughs> part is before the circle is like, okay, what questions, what visualization do I want to do to bring them where I want to bring them? What questions do I want to ask? And, and, and that's it. Once that's done, everything else is done. And, and I love being part of it too.
So yeah, it's fun. And then right? and, and I, what happened was right after your course, I took another course of called conversational intelligence. And it's about for executive coaches and it's all about the neuroscience behind building trust and, and getting us out of our amyg amygdala part of the brain and into our prefrontal, which is our wisdom and our ideas and our insight and the third, our third eye. And here's this very intellectual woman and she's like talking about how it's like, it's not all woo woo. And it's a whole, how, well, like the, the, the science of the brain and and everything we're doing in circles is together. And I'm like, wow. I'm like, this is why circles work. It was like, she just like, this is why circles, because we're getting into our oxytocin and we're getting into the part of the brain that's going to open up our wisdom, open up our creativity, open up so that we are who we are and we are ourselves. And we're authentic. And I'm like, a simple thing of circle. It's like, wow. So that was an amazing, like, I feel like God just put me into like this first, then that, put them together, and then boom. So it's just, mm. it was just like, okay, I'm home. This is where I need to be. <laughs> Brilliant. I, and I didn't know that. So I love yeah. these interviews because now I'm, I'm hearing about that. And that's just so brilliant. And it's just amazing to how the universe gives us exactly what we need. And it was almost like you got then that scientific proof of what you just experienced. And it's like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, duh. You know, like, yeah. ah, it, so it was cool. all about building the safe, the safe container, all about building the trust, all about, you know, servant leadership, uh, hospitable leadership, all about, you know, all, all from that perspective and not, you know, the way old leadership was. Like now they're starting to teach this to men. Interesting enough. Mm, yeah, well, it's needed, right? Circle yeah. works not just for women. Yeah. Although what I'm seeing is that it's really important for us as women to just circle with each other so that we can um, make the sisterhood bond. And then, um, you know, because I... At one point, I brought men in and I was doing a lot of co-ed work and I then made a decision to go back to just my service to the sisterhood. Um, and that's not to say that I don't want to serve men or that men don't belong. It's that the work that we're doing in women's circles is very specific and it's, um, the, that's the intention that I'm focused on. Yes. Um, that then we can, as women, go into our families and go to the men in our lives. And, you know, just like, I was thinking about this the other day. I have the most amazing men all around me. I only know incredible men. Mm. And I was like, floored by that realization. I mean, mm. my brother is just like taking off and soaring to like whole new heights. He just became a Wim Hof certified instructor and um is just a, a leader you know and just so conscious and aware and, and just amazing and has two daughters and you know just like wow and my dad is just amazing but I mean I'm just looking at like all of my husband's friends mm -hmm. are all like men I can call on for anything I mean they just they would show up in a second for me and yeah it's just it's like yeah, there's and, and I and understand that because I had the same thing. And women that are like ourselves, men like hanging around with women, but they don't like hanging out around with wimpy women <laughs> and whiners and complainers. So we're not that way. So that's why they open up their world to us. And that's how it happens because they're like, Oh, this is this is a female I could I could hang out with and, and like, <laughs> you know, and not complain. But it's um I forgot what I was just going to say, but it, what happened to uh, talking about with the men, the other thing that I got out of this with the circle is what I loved and I didn't anticipate or, or foresee that was the bonding of the sisterhood ship of women bonding and healing our own wounds um, together. And it has a lot to do with reason why you say why it works together with women only 
because we once we get to see we're all alike, we get to start to see each other as people. And we are people, we, we're not objects. We're not objects that we're in competition with. We're not objects that we have to like, you know, walk all over so that we can be successful because there's not enough room at the top for women. It's all of a sudden we see each other as we are all women that are going through the same needs and the same wants and the same issues and the same challenges. And we need to bond together and support one another. So that's been a pet peeve of mine. So that was another thing that came out for me through circles was that this is a way for me to heal our sisterhood wounds. And you said that, but like, it was like, that was just like, that was just another icing on the cake. It's, yeah. And no longer um, hoping that she doesn't succeed because then mm -hmm. that would make you less than, but to be like, oh my God, yeah, I want her to have, you know, the success, even though she might have been seen as my competition before. Any specific sisterhood healing story for you in your world, or just and is it more generalized? More generalized for me, I had. It's hard to say because for me, it was that I've had a lot of successes and I was a strong woman and I was successful. So I would feel that women didn't like want to be so close to me because I, they, I, because I was successful. So they put me on this pedestal and, and thought that, you know, I, I wouldn't relate and I couldn't understand. And so that was like the tough one. Like, you know, Oh, she's, 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 she's at a different level and it's not, it's not true. It's like, you know, I want, I need to be told, I'm um, like, I'm a rock star just as much as you do. <laughs> Cause I don't believe I'm a rock star every single day. So what I, it doesn't matter if I was a VP for on Wall Street or not, and what accomplishments I did on a day-to-day -day basis. I've always, I always do go through those self doubts. I always go through periods of like, can I really do this? <laughs> and, and and a lot of women don't feel like that. So I felt like I was being stabbed in the back for being successful. So that one. It was a big one. Really yeah, big. I guess it is. Yeah. Um, I'd love to hear how, how the lead circle has now impacted you. I mean, it's been, God, it's been over a year. So now how has it impacted who you are today? I've changed my whole way of doing my business. I've changed the way I coach. I changed the way I show up in the world, you know, and circle is what, what happened in the past is I'd be coaching women and they'd want me to coach them on their business, you know, on, you know, on the, their business systems and, creating programs and creating their signature systems, creating their ideal client, you know, going through all that. But then I would see that their mindset and their foundation was weak. And I'm like, we need to strengthen this foundation because no matter what I'm going to show you, you're never going to take the action. So now, so now I, it's like doing the group circle programs and getting that foundation going is a part of my business. It's not just something I do once in a while. It's like, it's continuous. Now I just, I just finished my first one online when I loved it uh, because it's, and the women even and loved it. So now I could, it doesn't have to be just be in my own backyard, but it's, it's helped me understand women better. It's helped me be a better coach. It's helped me be, um, understand how we communicate, how we, how we, get deep transformation as we're talking. And so I'm just weaving in everything I do now. Now I'm, I'm starting to do retreats. So now I know I could incorporate my circles into my experience with retreats and teaching. So I don't just, everything I'm teaching now is through experience. So, and I've always been, one of my core values has always been fun. That's when I'm like, you know, people say you got to know your core values. Mine is so like, because whenever I, whenever I have an issue, I'd be like, well, how can I make this fun? So if I'm procrastinating on something, if I say to myself, how can I make this fun? I get the answer and I make it fun and then I do it. <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> so I've now, everything I'm doing, I has to, I, I'm like in, I'm checking to make sure it's got that experience in there and it's got, and then that will incorporate some um, circles. And so it's awesome. So I great. Think, I think that's huge. <laughs> huge. And I remember you said earlier something about, um, and I'd love for you to share a little bit about this, of uh, the, the feminine piece of, mm -hmm and specifically around other powerful women who are more in their masculine and how now you can see a little bit of separation because you've integrated so much of your feminine. Can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So what happened was, so a couple of things. One is I started looking even back at my own self. So I had a very successful career in the eighties on Wall Street. I broke a lot of glass ceilings. I was the first female regional director of marketing and sales, the first female this and all that kind of stuff. And when I look back and I was like, I was very proud of is that I didn't try to be t pretend to be a man. I didn't dress like the men, like all the women in the eighties were. I didn't, I, I still, I was very feminine and I owned my feminineness. Yet at my cores, I have a lot of masculine energy. So that's, that's who I am. So I was like, it was, it was like, it was a real balance of masculine and feminine energy. So I, I, I started to realize that, that that's what I was doing without even knowing it, you know, back then. But what was happening is I still, the masculine was still showing up way too much more than, than I would want. So through your circles and through that, I started to tap back into my feminine side because I kind of like lost it. And I don't know why I lost it. It could be having kids, doing all this different stuff, but I kind of like lost it. Menopause was a big issue. <laughs> so, so tapping back into that. So now I started to realize that because I started looking at my own clients. Like I, when I first started my Gutsy Gal program, as I was saying, I really thought it was going to be the women who had really low confidence and low self-esteem, but the women that I was coaching, they were like all strong on the outside and powerful. And now we start seeing like inside all these challenges and issues and how they were, you know, really trying to show up in the world from the masculine energy and not tapping into their feminine energy as well. And I was like, Whoa. And I started to realize that I said, I went to um, a meeting where it was, lots of powerful women in the room and and i was from the outside i started all of a sudden i started seeing clearly how the masculine energy was coming through and how i was saying it was like wow they they need to tap into their feminine energy to go further and to be happier and to be more fulfilled and so that was like huge huge like you know for me to see because I think I'm like, you know, a lot of my feminine was showing through, but my 24 year old daughter was calling me out <laughs> with a lot of things as well. So all these things were happening simultaneously, you know, between the circles and the, uh, the group that I was in and then my daughter and then my own self and seeing my clients because so it was like all this come to like converging into like one beautiful storm and recognizing that women just need to own their feminine leadership and their feminine side to build a million dollar business. And they don't tap into that. Like I am a managing director for eWomen Network and Sandra Yancey, multi-million dollar earner. I was in her office in Dallas. You know what her office looks like? She's got chandeliers in her office. She's got it's like, it's so feminine. She says she did a, a, she has like some of these powerful billionaires come into her office and she goes, she's sitting there in the chairs and they're almost like squirmish because it's like a black and white checkered chair, you know, with a green carpet and chandeliers. And they're like, they're really like, like the feminine power is just oozing out of her office. And they're like, she goes, you got to see them squirming. <laughs> and I loved it. Oh my like, God. All women need to do this and have this. Mm. You know, mm. we all need to have like our office really showing us and reminding us of our feminine side and that, 
and that's where our power is and we don't need you know to be to be a powerful businesswoman so yeah it's it's still a it's still a beautiful ride and it's a ride that i'm loving more and more and and now i used to say bring out your unique brilliance now i'm like no let's bring out your unique feminine brilliance oh <laughs> another change yeah, so, yeah. Not a year and a half <laughs> wow um so i want to end with uh for all the women who are looking to start circle mm -hmm. and who are considering the how to lead circle program mm -hmm. what would you say to all those all those ladies who are on the verge i'd say this is something you absolutely need in part of your life that if you don't do it you're missing not only missing out on a part of your own fulfillment but you're being a disservice to the women out there because women need you women are looking for you women need all kinds of women not you know and there's just not enough of us and the women that are coming in my circles i mean all different kinds love it i haven't had one woman that's gone through my circle program that has not gotten beautiful results and i it's been building by referrals and i've never had anything built by referrals before it's, it's actually, you don't even have to do the marketing because the other women are like telling everybody go out and do it. And, and it doesn't take a lot from you. It's all it takes is for you to show up and be you. And I think when I get the, when I look at the testimonials and the feedback, it's that they honored that I allowed them to, to, to be themselves. And then I, I didn't have, I was non-judgmental and that I was part of it. And that I was on the same level with them. They bring that up because it's something I wouldn't think they even noticed, but they bring it up in their feedback forms that they love that I put myself on the same level with them. So you don't, you know, you don't, to be yourself, you don't have to learn anything because it's in you. There's nothing to learn. It's just show up as yourself. And if you have the desire and the dream and the desire to do it, then you're going to, you're going to show up for the women and that's what they want. Women just want support. You're just going to show up as supporting. It's no different than, you know, girlfriend calling you up and saying they need support. Now you're just doing it in a group and you're just doing it in your system that you teach and help us learn how to facilitate it, what works and what doesn't work. And, and that's the difference. That's what I needed. I needed well, like, cause I'm, I, wisdom is knowing what you don't know. That's my definition of wisdom. <laughs> you just know what you don't know. And I knew that I'm like, okay, you've been doing this. I need to like, I'm going to learn from you. If I'm going to do this, let me learn from somebody that knows what's working and what's not working and just show me how to do it and I'll do it. I don't need to reinvent the world. You know, yeah. I just have the feeling I want to do it. So show me your way. And, and that's when, when you showed me how to keep the safe container, when you showed us how to do the commitments and the agreements and the um, coming into the room, you know, and you show like how to enter the room, how to leave the room, what happens if conflict comes up. All these, these are things I wouldn't have thought about or done very well. And you did it so that I was able to be successful for my first, for my first circle. Wow. Yes. And, um, I'm just, the heart of the program is the relearning of the truth of who you are, right? And the, mm -hmm. there's nothing you need to learn because it's who you are, but we have forgotten who we are. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the heart of, of what we're doing in the program is like you coming home to yourself in, in the safety of circle. And then you get to go out there and create that. And I love that, that that's the feedback that you received. And if I'm like, wow, well, if there's one thing that probably all of you say about me is that I'm there, right there in the circle with you. I'm being vulnerable. I'm leading by example, right? And so it's, it's yeah, we're just, we're learning how to embody the work through this, yeah. through the circle. Yeah. Absolutely. Brilliant. So it was wonderful. It was one of the, I'd said, and I think, and I've told you this before, and I said it was one of the best programs that um, I took that year. It was, it was my number one. When you take off like what the end of the year and you're reflecting on what worked and what didn't work, 
was taking your how to lead circle was my number one um, program or thing that I did that I'm said, thank God I did it. <laughs> mm, yeah. Uh, thank you, Ro. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. And all the ladies in New Jersey, you can go to Rose Circles and we'll have a link to that in the show notes below. So you can go check her out because she's amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ro. Thank you. Thank you.